Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today with episode 175 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And it's me, Carrick, with ACG. Carrick, welcome back. You missed last week, but here we are together again. I did. I missed last week, and this week I almost missed <laughs> just because I'm a dumbass. So, <laughs> we no pictures this time, but hey, I'm here. That's what. Yeah, good to have you, man. All right, we got Thank a you. we got a great week of news. Uh, things are really picking up. The the holiday seasons really upon us at this point when it comes to all the games dropping. Um, but before that, we got a couple of things to go over. Number one, you can flick a buck. Flick a buck. Thank you. Mm. And uh, you have Carrick's Patreon, which he's doing a ton of stuff over there. Much like myself, we do giveaways, Patreon gaming sessions, Discord interaction. Um, I do early podcast access. You can get it on SoundCloud, which is a lot more consistent than what we do for the, the free listeners with iTunes and Google Play. Like last week's episode still isn't up yet. I do apologize for that. But that's kind of what happens. I don't try to do it where you guys feel like you're paying for a premium, but it's just a much more reliable and consistent service. And so, uh, yeah, that's what's kind of going on with that. But anyway, uh, we appreciate those of you who do come in and support the Patreon. It lets us continue to talk about uh, whatever the hell we want without really having to worry about some of those financial repercussions. You know, a lot of YouTubers like to chase titles, big news and stuff. And and because of your support on Patreon, uh, you let us just talk about what we love and, that, and that's so important so really i just want to send a big thanks to you guys and also for uh, last week's support on the episode where it was myself camel works and fudge muppet uh it was one of our more higher listener uh episodes we hit just about 30k i believe which was excellent Ooh. yeah so pretty awesome stuff there we talked about everything fallout 76 pretty much it's a off the walls discussion between us three we had all gone to the events we're sharing experiences uh, we all pretty much discover new things about the game as we go along. So if you missed that episode and you're really looking forward to Fallout 76, I highly recommend you give it a listen. Uh, Carrick, I apologize. I feel bad when I do this when I let you know news at the same time as the listeners because we were scheduling the Yuri Lowenthal interview, right? And so we had a date picked out. And about an hour beforehand, I get an email that it was canceled, which is fine, yes, but uh, that's sad. Meaning that um, pretty much we're looking to reschedule. Carrick and I will sit down with Yuri at one point in time, but we don't have a new date. Um, it was originally supposed to be October October 16th, yeah. And like I said, it was canceled. Uh, something came up, totally fine. Um, so we're, we're looking to reschedule, but um, we'll, we'll have something for you guys eventually. Just we're not sure when, so we do apologize for having that fall through the cracks. Um, and last but not least, we always like to talk about in the introduction, upcoming content. For me, uh, the Fallout 76 beta is starting this week, so we got ourselves a lot of that. Uh, that's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to playing more in like my own room. Um, and so then we also have Soul Calibur 6 and My Hero Academy reviews. Um, I've kind of decided mentally, this isn't set in stone, um, but I've decided mentally that I'm probably going to hop in on the Red Dead train more along the lines of the launch of Red Dead Online and less with the launch of the game just because, as most of you know, we're a primary Bethesda channel, so I want to focus on the beta and um, the launch of Fallout 76 because I know that's kind of my bread and butter along with all the other games I like to review and make little supplemental content here and there. So uh, for me, that that's kind of what I'm going to be working on. But how about you, Carrick? You got anything in the works, any reviews, any separate content videos what are you what are you working on i so i got <clears throat> did you mention i think you did but I, i'm confused on the names my hero one yeah one one's justice so i've got that um not quite sure especially because i fucked up my back so it's like i can't sit and like play games for very long so mm -hmm. i'm trying to do that i'll do red dead um i do i've i will be getting back into Twitch for sure, um, more than just those, whatever the, right. the, the podcasts. But um, I think right now those are the two. Well, Call of Cthulhu, I did get, I I, oh. I did get that code, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm a personal huge fan of the original and the Xbox uh, Dark Shadows of the Earth. So to me, it sounds weird, but like if you rated excitement, like Red Dead, I'm excited in a different way. But gotcha. Call of Cthulhu, if it turns out good, then you have Sinking City later. So those are the, those are the main things I'm doing. I'm trying we're trying to do a couple interviews, but I don't really I don't really push that, especially right now. I'm so fucking hurt that like I just don't even want to. Like I skipped out on Soul Calibur. I gave a review in my Discord. Mm -hmm. I skipped out on Starlink. I gave a review on my Discord. I just told people what I thought, and 
I didn't even make videos because yeah, it man. was too pain painful to record. Totally understandable. It sucks. I um yeah, Soul Calibur for me, it was one of those things I was planning on reviewing because they were like, "We'll get it to you early." I was like, "Sweet," and they did get it to me early. But it was like, I don't say okay. I don't I want to clarify for the for the viewers. I don't say it's an entitled way, but Carrick will understand because he's like me. He makes reviews like they gave it to me the day before the embargo lifted, which yeah. was two days before yeah. launch. Which for me is like. You know, you, you want the content before the embargo list, but I still was appreciative of it. I'm still going to make a review for it because I want to hold up my end of the bargain. Um, it's the first review copy I've ever gotten from Namco Bandai, so it was a really a historical moment. As Carrick knows, has been a huge uphill battle trying yeah. to get that established, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, man, And I'm, it's I'm so strange how you and I can have different like uh, problems with different, like d same publisher. Like you'll be all, I get have no issues yeah and I'll be square like, for me yeah square for me I'm yeah, like, yeah square for it. you yeah it's so weird and man like, it's so Tomb weird and it can... <laughs> yeah dude tomb raider took me a full well it took me a day but no wait a minute that was the one where i had asked for the wrong copy mm. i i oh, asked yeah, yeah, for the yeah. copy of the version that wasn't done but it was so funny because uh, it, it, whenever we're talking it's uh, i'll always hear you say a company and be like the fuck mm. you're having a problem with them and then i'll tell you a company you'll be like Dude, they respond to me right away. I just, I don't know, man. We don't overlap when it comes to PR and who likes us, I guess. I guess so. Anyway, we got ourselves another Red Dead headliner. Uh, it's finally upon us. We're going to be talking about pretty much our excitement for the game at this point. Because for me, it really sunk in when I was watching the launch trailer. Um, that's when it hit me. I was like, wow, in like a week where we're actually going to be playing this game. And what's amazing is it hasn't been a super long road to the title right like it's really just been about a year or so of of marketing and yeah. whatnot i think it's felt longer because in that year you know we saw a couple of trailers we've seen a, a lot of concept art and they did ramp it up in this last month or so um but I, i'm personally on board i'm excited um i was kind of holding myself back a little bit but um yeah after after seeing that launch trailer it's hard to really put my finger on it, but it, it just clicked with me. I was like, all right, like I, I'm excited for this. And I think it's probably more so the realization of like, I'm going to be playing that in a week. You know, I, I will have my right. hands on that. I'll, I'll, like what I'm seeing, I'll be diving into. And just that feeling I think is what really grabbed me Le less than I was already convinced that, you know, the game looked awesome. Um, but what about you? Where do you stand on the title at this point? I, I think you've come up and I've gone down. Okay. So like, I'm excited probably as excited he's probably still more excited than you just because mm. i was such a fan of the first one um gotcha. but i would i would like say this i don't know man it's weird like the excitement's odd because i feel like that's a game where reviews will come and then you'll have your online reviews will have to come for that and then you'll have all these deep dives and this is going to sound really jaded but i'm sort of getting tired of deep dive videos like because a lot of them, including my own, I've made mistakes myself. There's some, they're, they're wrong a lot of times. And so, but they're put out like a YouTube video. Let's say I do walk in the walk and I'm wrong about something. Mm -hmm. but, but that video, when I say it comes across as I know for a fact, and maybe I do, it's a fact in my brain, but it's wrong because of something else. And it's like lately, everybody seems to be, it seems to all be those dude. Like there, there was even a Starlink fucking deep dive kind of video and i was like of all the games in the universe that doesn't require like, are you saying a deep dive just so i can understand analysis your, your thought you're saying um, like uh we're almost looking too deep like some things mechanically are just as presented but because yeah. of long form content becoming more popular the algorithm supports it people are doing it more people want to yeah. become uh more analytic of games uh if that's i don't even think that's the word I want to analyze games. that more. is a word but analyze a game yeah 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 um, yeah it's for sure that and it's also the fact that like yeah. dude they that like you said clickbait or not you didn't say clickbait but i mean there's the the title type yeah um you have the title type of these and then especially talking to developers and publishers but mostly developers indie and, and big like just lately a couple random emails and having somebody be like this video that just posted was an hour long and was wrong about 60% of what they said. Mm -hmm. But we're not allowed to even... And, and they weren't even mad. They were like, no, it's wrong. And if somebody takes that as religion, then if we do a sequel, people will... 
they'll mend that knowledge from the video into the game. And, he, and this person's worked on multiple sequels, and they were like, this is starting to happen a lot in the inner circle of devs, where you're starting to get this thing where the social awareness becomes history. where And it's not true. And it, like even Dark Souls, you'll get somebody say something about Dark Souls, like, there's this, so it must be this. And developer will be like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's not like what it is at all. Like speculation based off lore, for example, kind of. Yeah, but exactly, yeah. And I do them. And I know you do them, but yeah, so absolutely. it's not that it, it's not that I even want them to stop. I'm just not really interested in what I know is going to happen, which is two full months of my YouTube <laughs> like subscription being filled. Dude, people were making five videos on the trailer. One trailer. I saw somebody make five it was a, it fucking was a, videos. And for a launch trailer, it was pretty short when you think about it. Oh, sorry. We don't say, I, yeah, we don't say that, that even short. We don't even say that negatively. Mm -hmm. Just like. It was One short. Minute, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and I don't know why it just like, I, I don't know. I'm sort of, especially as I continue to do the channel, I continue to like look at particular things and be like, you know what I want to hit and stuff like that. And for some reason that in particular, I'm just trying to really watch and make sure that everything I do is like, I don't yeah, know, man. I mean, cause term it, but. a couple of things, you know, I think with, well, with what you started with about like long form videos and how like you know we're gonna see the separate content for Red Dead versus Red Dead Online, there's gonna be that whole multi month period oh, of coverage. Dude, yeah. uh, I think that's what Rockstar wants. But also, yeah, um, I've noticed that like for example, uh, Black Ops Four just dropped. We'll talk about that later. But I noticed IGN did three separate reviews for each component of the game. Yeah. So I, I just feel like that's a I don't say it like justifiably. I know I'm, I trended towards longer form content because I was going, I know it's where the algorithm favors, but a lot of people for me personally were like, I want to hear you say more because my videos were notoriously three to five minutes long. And people were like, right, right. that's so short. You have, we know you have more to say. Why don't you just say it? And like couple news bits together and, and make longer videos that are of higher quality. And I did that and, and it worked, but I agree that, um, Sometimes I've noticed with creators is you'll see they'll be making a long form video. Like they know it's going to be a, a meaty discussion. Usually before you even start, you you know, all right, it's going to be a long one. Like for you, like if you're doing an indie review, five hour game, you're like, all right, this is going to be a, a yeah, 10 right. minute, 12 minute video yeah. review versus this is Red Dead 2. This is probably going to be 20 minutes long. Right. right. Um, so I think with that context, you know what's going to be a meaty discussion. And I know a lot of YouTubers out there like to, just a business practice that I get. They want to hit the 10 minute mark because you can double up on ads. You make more money. It keeps your channel more relevant. There's there's so many pluses to it. Um, but I've always been at the school of thought that if you just make quality content, you'll be okay. So I've had so many videos like undershoot by 10 seconds, the 10 yeah, minute mark of too. five seconds. And it's like, I don't say this is like a, a put myself on the pedestal kind of thing, but I, I I'm kind of like whatever about it, because um, like I, I alluded to in the beginning, you know, the Patreon helps so much with that type of stuff. Where I don't feel like I gotta fluff my content to to make a couple extra bucks, but I kind see I, I'm of a different school of thought because I kind of like the longer form content. I like that people are trying to spread social awareness of the the deeper parts of games, like people are going into audio, people are going into lore. I like them; they're just that, wrong a lot. Hmm, okay, so. Like, I agree. I right. like them, but they're wrong a lot. Like, that bothers me. I don't know why it bothers me, by the way. I'm not saying well, I have any it, clue why it bothers me. Maybe it's it, because... It Even when I make mistakes. Because you've said developers have told you that could be it. Because I've never... I personally, I'm close to developers, but I've never had one confide in Who me. Who worked and be, on sequels. And, and yeah. been like, hey, this is fucking with us. So for me, I've never, I've never even considered that. Usually, you're, yeah. we're, we're, many of us creators... I don't want to speak for you or of the, the kind of the, the thought process of we're supporting these developers in a way by like making content about their games for sure, trying to right. help in our own way, keep them alive. Obviously as, as long as the company's trying to keep them alive, to keep us alive, it's like a cycle of life. So it's, it's interesting, almost a uh, polarity to hear that a developer's kind of like, Hey, this, this isn't helping us, you know? So what's funny. You mentioned something that I had forgotten, but you're absolutely right. Um, I, don't know what to think um, of IGN's uh, Blackout review. I get I never they announced it. I just saw that they, they announced that they were going to do it, and we saw the three. But one thing I did notice, mm -hmm. and it's very smart, 
is that some of them are review stuffing. So what they do is they'll review and then they'll put three or four more videos out within the next day or so with the word review, even though it's not a review. So what happens is when I search for a review, I'm noticing Let's Players all over. And people say full Let's Play with review. And they'll only do one video and there's no review in it. It's yeah. just used to... And so there's stuff like that. And I don't know why that bothers me. Sometimes it does. But mm -hmm. like the IGN thing, I get why they... You know, they, they did whatever they did. But even websites, I mean, like, I guess I went into N4G, which I use... Right. When, but prior to us talking because they're a good aggregate and it was like 18 red dead stories and my brain went i'm fucking done like mm -hmm. i'm it like it did it disconnected it was like i just scrolled past it right. and to me that's a bad sign yeah like, i think I, part of it part of it i i like to separate myself and take a bigger not that you haven't but i take a bigger look at it and i'm like okay we we view games differently because we are of the good fortune we're able to play so many of them that mm, yeah. for a lot of people like this is their one game their second game they're buying this year like they're they're excited so yeah i think of it i always go back to it i think of skyrim when i was in high school i literally failed a fucking class because i spent it on the computer looking up every article rereading the same article like 18 different ones for that game i was just ridiculously pumped for it so i always think back to that as kind of a way to like touch base with like there are people who who just look so forward to the only the next rockstar game like they they bought gta 5 they bought the re-release they played gta online for years and like this is their next step where like i think there is an audience for those 18 articles it's the, the biggest game of the year absolutely um Matt, next two years probably right? yeah yeah right Maybe. with the red dead like, online I mean, it's very well possible so yeah I feel like just everyone thinks it's a smart <laughs> business decision to just go all in on it. Now, we're independent creators, so for me, I've made the decision. I'm, you know, I'm going to enjoy this game in my own time. I will make content for it eventually because I'm sure I will find something in there I want to talk about. That's usually how it goes, but um, more than anything, I've made the decision because I am my own person and I can run my, I put this in quotes, business how I want to, that, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to create content about other things because there there is probably an audience that doesn't care about Red Dead as much and yeah. wants to support and is getting other... underserved because exactly. everybody else is exactly. Yeah. So it creates kind of a a hole for us to fill. So in a yeah, way, sure. I get why there are there are websites that are like here's 18 yeah. articles, but I also kind of appreciate that because I, I number one I get it. I've been there. And number two. It, it provides opportunity for people like us who are like, let's just fill the gaps because that's what I was going to do anyway. You know, I'm excited for Red Dead. Absolutely. But um, at this point in time, because um, I voiced in the past, like not that I wasn't sold, but more so that it just it, the excitement hadn't hit me um, where now it kind of has. But I'm sticking to my plan because it's very infrequent. I'm able to have a big release that I'm able just to enjoy as a, as a gamer, you know, yeah, like, it's usually like all right, what's the content I'm going to make for this? What What's the review I'm going to make for this? Do I have to crunch this? And it's nice to know that I'm going to be going into Red Dead maybe a couple of days late, and I'm going to play it at my own pace. And when I beat it, I beat it, and that's when my review will drop. You know, if it's in the middle of November or if it's in the beginning of December, I doubt it'll be that late because I'm, I'm sure I'll be playing it a ton. But point being is that, you know, that's that's a nice feeling for me. That's kind of where I stand on it. But... um. Yeah, I can see that. As in general, with the game, because uh, I guess I guess in a way we kind of got off track. Um, not really, but are you said your excitement's kind of gone down? Has it been it's because just too much? Yeah, is, I was gonna say, has it been with anything with the game, or has it just been the the coverage around it? Like, do you feel like once you get in that game world, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, maybe not, oh my gosh, but do you feel like that'll that'll cause maybe a bit of a turnaround it it will always cause a turnaround only because like even prior to turning the game on i'll put it in and i'll sit there for a couple minutes and be like erase everything that you thought of prior and and just review the game like right, just like right. that's why i've liked some Blank games slate. i know some people are like hmm and uh, disliked others um so yeah i'm primal. sure yeah primal i'm <laughs> sure there will be people who um will find something wrong with in anything I've said, but overall, that's what I usually do. And so I, I'm there's going to be stuff in there that I bet you is awesome, but I also bet you, just like GTA, there'll be a number of things that aren't that great, mm -hmm. and and that'll be fun to discuss too. 
I think what happens to me is, and it just dawned on me, I think I know where this is coming from. Um, Starlink, Soul Calibur, Odyssey, and probably Vampire. I've seen a number of videos with just outright wrong data. Interesting. And I think that's also starting to bother me. Where I'm like, and the, and no one, it's, I don't want anybody being questioned. And I don't think anybody should be like, you, you fucked up. It's just that I sort of wish people would put a tiny bit more fucking thought into making something so that when they say something about a game, Vampire was a, a pretty incredible one where there were multiple I, people yeah, talking about the battle system and they were completely wrong. Um, look at Odyssey. Talk to a reviewer. 36 hours into the game, emails me and says, I can't get past this guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what level are you? Like level 37. What level are them? Level 35, level 36. And I was like, well, you should be able to get past him. He's like, yeah, when I shoot them, I do a lot of damage. No lie, this is what he said. When I shoot them, I do a lot of damage. But when I get up close and hit them, I don't. And I'm like, what's your warrior number? And the exact email I get back is, what, what, what do you mean by warrior number? Hmm. Like the fucking giant numbers that are in the three skill trees that tell you where you've specced. And I don't know how. I don't know if they missed t tutorials, but they did not know about those numbers. Hmm. And... I was like, dude, you're reviewing a game. Like, you're you're that many hours in, and you don't see the giant thing telling you the damage. Yeah, to, you know, to preface a lot for you're people do. that that around that level part is you're you're easily like thirty hours, twenty twenty eight hours minimum in the yeah, game. Yeah, twenty eight thirty hours in. Yeah. yeah, and and that kind of stuff I think just fed into this. And then I saw some stuff about Starlink, and I was like, what the fuck? I saw some mm. stuff about Soul Calibur, Vampire, really Spider Man. Didn't seem to happen so much. Um, I think Far Cry. Spider Man was a one bit. that had a bit of a retraction when you think about it. You had the puddle gates, and mm -hmm. then yeah. the it game went the came out, way. and the game came out, and people were like, "Oh, okay, this looks great," you know? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. I think Red Dead will, but I, see, I think Red Dead I'll probably like really like and only have. Speaking of Spider Man, that small thing. That's where I think a game with long, not that you're saying it didn't, but I just for the listener, I think that's a game where. Um, long form discussion videos helped it because digital foundry came out with that video like factually proving there haven't been um technical uh changes with yeah. spider-man that what you see in the ether demo was the exact same thing just i think what they say they changed some of the i want to say shaders um they changed and they changed the location just, because yeah. they chose the daytime they chose the time that you were going to have those fights. That's why the time can't be changed till you beat the game. Yeah. And so they chose a particular time frame and they decided to remove puddles from that area. They're everywhere in the game. Did you everywhere. see what they added in the game now? There's a new photo mode update and they added puddles as a sticker you can That's put funny. in the in the photo mode now. So you can That's put puddles awesome. wherever you want. And I said I literally said that is this has turned into such a success story for yeah, them. Yeah. 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 And and those videos help. I just think they get one one millionth one one millionth the views as Puddlegate videos did. And mm -hmm. even our video, when we said, how, what is, how does this make, we got a, a much larger view number because we were talking about Puddlegate. For which one? Oh, yeah, that yeah, podcast. Puddlegate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I don't know. It's just like, like I said, it's just a small nitpick, and it's not, it, it's just that, especially a game like this, I, I don't know why, but it's like I'm also, I want a lot of these smaller games just like you to do well, Call of Cthulhu, um, you know, Soul Calibur, all these games, th these other games to get some word in edgewise. And it just seems like we're at this point where no one cares about any of that stuff. It's all got to be 85 videos on a fucking horse's ass and how it flexes. <laughs> and you're just like, Jesus, tits. I don't know. Yeah. That's just me. I'm just bitching. I could be, I could change my idea tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's just no, what I think. I, right I mean, now. I get I get where you're coming from because y you know the vampire is easily, and we'll get into this actually later in the video or in the podcast. But the vampire is easily in my top three so far this year. It, I I I love that game so much. I was a huge advocate for like just just please if you, even if you're not gonna beat it, just buy the game because if this company puts some more money into this game, like it was amazing what as it was. You and I agreed yeah. completely that like 
every penny that went into this game went into the right areas. Like they, I thought the combat was good. You know, it was serviceable, but it was also enjoyable. And I think it, it got a bad rap, which is something you had touched on. I think that the conversation system is brilliant and, and a lot of companies need to adopt that idea yeah. and evolve on it. Absolutely. Because what was there was interesting in, in, in uh, it just wanted you to explore and converse with everything yeah. and it made it in a natural way that wasn't confusing to the player. And I, I just, you know, to, so I completely agree that seeing games like that get support, like, cause it's, and some people will misunderstand, misinterpret this, but you, you know, Rockstar is absolutely going to get all the money in the world with this game. Yeah, so right. I get where you're coming from, where you're like, yeah, I'd love to see Call of Cthulhu managed to do well in this in this storm of games and red dead articles coming out but i mean like apart, we can't be surprised though right you know we have nope. the biggest game of the year dropping and like yeah people are gonna go all in on that i remember when before my channel really hit a growth spurt in in 2013 with i i keep talking about my own stories as if they're representative of everyone else but i guess i just like to share my experiences um but GTA Five, I remember when it was gonna drop in 2013, and like I went all in on that game. Like every video for about a month or two that came out on my channel, which I know is crazy to think about, was all GTA Five. My channel grew a lot from that because I was, I was doing like GTA Online character creation videos, teaching you how to make like the Joker or James Bond, and I was just having a good time with that, man. I was just putting a creative twist on it. So I feel like that's where. You know, I love how many people want to get in on Red Dead or Red Dead Online because I think you you see, you know, I'm not saying my own content is indicative of that, but you see cool creative twists that other people come up with, and I that's what I like about it. But yeah, you also get just a lot of like it's overwhelming. I and and I think one of them, like I said, that that fucking trailer, not this trailer by the way, mm -hmm. but the one prior that was a little bit longer. There were channels doing like I said, five or six videos about, and I was, just, it, my brain was just like, the fuck is happening? It wasn't channels. I should change that, by the way. It was also like websites. And I also think that mystery is leaving us. And I think that's also sad. It's, it, things are being analyzed so much mm -hmm. that the mystery of okay. some of the excellence in games. So if I see something happen in a game and I think it's happening because I did something. That's my reality right then. Like I'm making that reality whether they decided to or not. Sometimes, I don't know about you, like when somebody debunks all that shit or breaks down how everything works sometimes, it, it, it removes a little bit of that mystery too. Where I'm just like, hmm. Well, right. yeah, because I mean, like I, 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 it harkens back to a day where like You'd play, I remember, like, play a game on the PS2. I wouldn't know how to do something, and you'd shut off the game for a night. you come back the next day fresh head. you just get it that day, and yeah, you, you, you did it yourself. It. Where a lot of times nowadays, I won't get something. I'll sign off. I'll go on Twitter, and I'll see, like, three articles or people tweeting about, about the same thing. how they are either struggling with the same thing or, like, player finds out how to unlock Weapon X Right. in this game and and here's how you can do it and it's like well someone already did it you know what i'm saying like it just i get what you're saying like it it, strug it, stri it strips away some of that mystique excitement of discovering uh the undiscovered really right yeah. and um yeah. so I, I feel you on that but, i mean uh, it's my it's my choice not to watch them the, the thing though yeah true, obviously true absolutely it, but red dead 2 I, I don't i think you'll be happy because I remember with GTA Five, there were so many, so many cool Easter eggs in that game, man. There were a, a yeah. ton of them, and I know Red Dead's going to be full of them. So that's what I've, I, I, I touched on it. I think two two weeks ago with our episode where we talked about Red Dead Two, and I want to touch on it again how just like I was, I was more pumped about the camp than anything, and like that's the other thing is those little touches rockstar puts in the game the little easter eggs you know like i remember on the phone the websites you could find in gta 5 and yeah there was like the ufo alien rumor thing and and just that stuff was is so cool to me i find that ultimately more fun than the actual game and i think that's that taps into that that sense of the the mystery and discovery that that you were hitting on yeah, um for sure. so yeah i get you on that but Red Dead 2 is finally upon us, and we will have to dig into that and see how many mysteries are going to be there for Carrick and I to solve. So, now, 
Let's get into Days Gone. This is a PlayStation exclusive that has really entered development hell clearly, and so we got the full blurb from the studio today. We want to share a change in release date for this highly anticipated title from Ben's studio. We recently decided to move the release of Days Gone from the crowded February time frame to April 26, 2019. So that's two months after the fact. While the studio is eager to see Days Gone in the hands of fans, Ben Studio will take the opportunity to polish Days Gone further. Uh, Game Informer, I also noted while doing my research, uh, said that in the late January slash February releases will include Kingdom Hearts 3, Anthem, Metro Exodus, and the Resident Evil 2 remake. So, uh, also I think Crackdown 3 is in that mix too. It which, is, yeah. Which is like two console exclusives that have been in development hell for it feels like forever. Obviously, Crackdown a little a lot longer, but um, I I just I feel like with this that it's interesting their choice of words and in the press release they go we want to move from the crowded february time frame um with with sony exclusive notoriously dominating and then they're the one to move out of the crowded time frame and not you'd think like a metro i thought metro out of all games in that crowded period would be like okay look like we haven't released the game since like what 2014 yeah it's been a long time you know like we we probably should wait it out and have our own day where I think a lot of people are going to look at Metro, for example, and it looks so good, and I cannot wait, but you have games like Kingdom Hearts that have that Disney allured. Anthem is going to do really well, I feel. Resident Evil 2, I think, is also, after Resident Evil 7, really put the series back on the map again. I feel like the Resident Evil 2 remake is going to excite fans again that you'd think that Metro Exodus would be the one to move, but seeing that it's days gone, why do you feel that Sony decided, after touting such Big exclusive sales every single time. God of War drop records broke. Spider-Man records broke. Horizon Zero Dawn records broke. Why Days Gone? Why is this one, do you feel, why is this one moving? Um, I, I would assume most likely that they did see it and were, were, you know, not that they weren't excited by it, but they, you know, they look at a game and are just like, what is it going up against? Gotcha. And it makes sense. Maybe, uh, like, for a company, especially, like, let's say Phil Spencer shows up and he's looking at your game and he's all, well, it looks good, but here's who you're competing against at this time. So I think what most likely happened is Sony just looked at it and was like, all right, it's a zombie game, which I think zombie games are on their... They're not, they're not ever going to go away, but they're certainly not at the pinnacle that they were before. Zombies were so big for so long that I think that... Um, that comes up, but also you do have some strange situations like Spider-Man's DLC mm -hmm. and in these games that are out that are huge. They may have also looked at that and said, listen, you're fighting now against all these other successes, which we've already talked about, uh, like a Spider-Man or a God of War, or whatever. You know what? Let's hold back a little while so that when we do release it, you're not fighting yourself because that's another thing you don't want to do, right? You don't want to like really be fighting your own company for mind share so most likely it's a mixture of that and then i mean i don't know if i believe them just saying that they delayed it like that part of it just we chose to it's usually not how it happens i mean remembering that millions of dollars are lost whenever they do that yeah because they always say you don't sit on a finished product once it's ready yeah. it's out so it's clearly not there yet what, what do you think Here's the thing is, what I saw from that game, I remember we talked about it in a previous episode, and I know we were both kind of like, we've seen this type of game in a, in a sense before. It didn't seem to really stand out identity-wise. We're like, Spider-Man stands out. It's you know a superhero game. God of War stands out for its own reasons. Horizon did for its, its universe, for sure. Um, where I don't think Days Gone poked that curiosity that so many PS exclusives have, but... At the same time, the game itself looked solid. Like the amount of zombies, but, yeah, yeah, the amount of zombies on screen, the, the you know the the harshness of the universe. I guess the only thing I can think of is it seems like a hybrid of all the Sony exclusives, um, and not its own original thing. That's the really only thing I can I can hit on that just by looking at it. I was like, this seems like what's off with the title. Is this one that you know because we're so used to Sony. Home run, home run, home run. Do you think this is the one they slip on and it doesn't get those rave reviews? I think that of, of all of their titles, this certainly has the highest chance of that. J 
just because mm -hmm. I was impressed by the number as well, but I'm going to be honest, like when they were shooting guns at a ton of zombies running towards him, my brain, I just, I did, I disconnected. I was like, all right, we've seen this. I mean, we haven't, everybody tries to add something, right? Like State of Decay tries to add survival right. and zombies and building homes. But um, that game in particular, when they were showing it, I never once thought that it looked like a Sony exclusive. Strangely enough, okay. I never once went. This is Horizon Zero Dawn, but it, you know, the zombie version of it. Mm -hmm. It didn't look as good graphically, and I don't even remember who's making it. It's not Gorilla who made Horizon. Who who's even making? Uh, Sony Bend. Sony Bend. All right. Sony Do you know what they have worked on they, prior? Oh man, I want to. Let me don't. Keep going. Let me double check I, well, because I, I have a, I have a couple. Yeah, you do that because I have a couple of games in mind. I want to say that I think they did Uncharted: Golden Abyss on. If it's yeah, they Golden did Abyss. Fight for the Future and Golden Abyss. They did. Oh, it looks like it's all. It's all portable titles. Yeah. Interesting. So this is their first time at consoles, I think. Yeah. Oh, way. Yeah. Yeah. So play, play back in the PlayStation Two days, they made Siphon Filter. They've uh, made two, three, great games. Four. Yeah, they've made yeah. great games. There was no question of that. Just, um, I think it just has an identity issue. I feel like we've seen it does, zombies. Yeah. Um, I just. It, I mean, it, we've even seen the main character, like. You know, it's like Beanie, like me, whatever. You know, a, a, a biker, <laughs> biker dude. Like, we've. It, it feels like, it feels like a sequel to a game we never got, and been been there, done that a little bit. Um, not that that'll stop me from liking it, but what I saw didn't make me go, oh wow. Mm -hmm. um, they, but they also haven't shown much. That's the honest truth too. They haven't, like a Red Dead. Where they, you know, they're like, here's a system, and here's how many fucking animals there are, and you know, here's a horse's testicles. That that's cool because you can go, okay, there's all that data. They really haven't done that much, so there might be these systems inside of that game that are very fun too, uh, you know, that turn out to make the game really worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, lo I like what I see, but um, what, what's interesting is that with these delays. We haven't seen after the fact like what they've added like oh this is what the delay was for that that really changes exactly it. you yeah. know I Good feel like point. that's the the biggest part of it all it's like everyone knows a game doesn't get worse when it gets delayed but we haven't seen why it has become better um, because from what from what I I'm going off memory I haven't watched the gameplay for it in a really long while but when I saw it I was like all right like cool but I didn't see anything like super buggy about it and I, I just wonder if it's like little things such as how the open world works because i remember yeah there was one point where you're driving around um on your bike and i they had like a, a string just attached from tree to tree and you get clotheslined by it and it's just this dynamic open world event where you get ambushed and it's like how do they put that out there so often that it's not like intruding on the player but it's a, a cool unique thing that happens i feel like when I saw that alone, and then I, you see all the delays, I was like, okay, maybe they just have all these cool ideas for things that happen in the world, but how they make the player naturally stumble upon them without it feeling forced. And if you keep getting hit by a million and one wires cr like across some trees, you know, wh how does that, how, not how do you balance that out, but rather that can ruin the experience if not balanced, if not put in the right amount um, like if it happens once, twice, sure. But if it happens like twice in five minutes, yeah. that instantly like ruins a big part of the experience. Not and like what's, what else is going on in the world too? Yeah. Like, you know, to, to like, if it does happen a lot, is there other things that cause you to ignore that because mm -hmm. you understand and go, oh, okay. Like I understood why Spider-Man was 30 FPS because mm -hmm. of what they were doing. So it, 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 the thing is, is there is no understanding for this game right now for me. Oh, I can't look at it and go, I understand. Also, zombie AI. That's like, I feel the hardest thing to do because it has to not be too smart, but you don't want to have stupid AI. Yeah, yeah, it's going to, I mean, and then like, I think the identity crisis is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. I just don't see, there's nothing about that. Horizon Zero Dawn, you're like, Transource Rex is a robot? Fucking yes. Mm -hmm. Like, twice yes. And three times on Sunday. But it's also, like, they didn't even, like, awesome. tell us 
anything story wise, just the game sold itself. You know what I'm saying? You exactly. Saw it and you're like, I want to be there. And here, they didn't do that, but they also didn't say, oh, because we don't have cool creatures, whatever, we're going to show you more of the story. Instead, they didn't do either. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's hard for us to even identify what's happening. Right. And it just, it really did look generic. Like when he was, there's one part where he's got like an M16, he's shooting at all these zombies running. And it was the AI for sure as well. But it was like, it was just like, okay, there's some enemies getting shot. But there was no, it, there was never me going, I get it. Like I now understand. I, you know what I wish they'd do? I wish they'd do a three minute trailer where they're like, in the year 2000, blah, 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 this happened. So that at least you get some story that you can look at whatever trailer and go, oh, I get it now. The reason right. why he's doing this is this. Yeah. Hopefully they'll do that. I feel like what what the game is going to thrive off of, which is the hardest to sell, I feel, in games, is just how shit can go south fast. Yeah. And what it's like to be holding the controller, being like, oh, God, this is not good. And then, like, you see, I remember in the demo, like, he started setting shit on fire. And he started, like, running around this mm-hmm. place. And just more True. and more yeah. started coming. And you were like, how do you get out of this mess? And I that's what sold me. I was like, wow. You know, imagine being player there that's that's got to be somewhat thrilling um but th- but then the other thing is like do, do those sw- swarms coming in when shit starts to unravel fast when does that get really annoying and you're like okay i just yeah. want to move on and not be swarmed constantly like like far cry 5 when you're traveling from point a to point b and people are spawning in front of you or like hey it's him and and, and shooting you constantly it's like okay i'm just trying to traverse yeah, I mean, doesn't it feel too like every game has a shtick of some kind? Yeah, like Spider Man's got swinging, right? Vampire's There's a got its theme. story, or it's it's like it's it's narrative. There's always like this thing, and I guess with that game, I don't know what it is. Yet. Yeah, every I feel every game. That's why I I always hit on it with my reviews. Like, what's the core theme here? Because I feel like it's the spinal cord of a game. Like when I was reviewing Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales, I was like, the core of this game is trust. So if you are able to establish a connection with these characters and and trust them and based off your decision, see if they betray you or they stick stick by your side and how that all ends up at the end of this war, like that is a, a strong theme that that just constantly repeats itself throughout the game where Spider-Man, it's like be the hero. And so you see these epic yeah. screenshots and you're changing your costume and being all types of heroes. God of War, I feel, is just kind of like a pinnacle AAA game like taking the the god of war power mission fantasy and just, yeah, yeah and just <laughs> elevating it right yeah. um like you said vampire very much like narrative conversation getting to know people like the average joe is actually has his own set of problems and, and there's much more than what meets the eye and what do you want to do with that person you you will is it up to you to decide their fate that kind of shit um and so i think when yeah you as you pretty much touched on right there like when you look at days gone it's like what is the theme it's like zombies it's and, and people go okay i've watched nine seasons of the walking dead you know it's yeah i i get the core theme is zombies what else do you have to offer me and that's why you're saying you'd want to see a trailer like in the year whatever this is what happened i, I would rather them just be like this is this is what happened man like you're you're just in a world with zombies and like let's talk about the story now like no one cares about the outbreak and we've seen there's I, I feel like I could be wrong. This this is why I'm currently not a, a game writer, but I feel like how many creative spins can you put on the reasoning for a zombie outbreak um, in a video game and make it interesting for a player when we've that's that's one trope. And I usually don't like saying that because I feel like there's a reason things are tropes because sometimes, you know, when, when one of the best twisted. things for them to do, though, would be. I mean, I, I don't care about if it's history or current. Um, wh- one of the best things they could do is explain it like no one knows, too. And and then cover, you know, the current history right now. So, yeah, either way would be fine Good for me. I, I just think we need something to bounce off of narratively, yes. which there's nothing right now. Sure, I don't sure. know. I don't know anything about his history, so I don't know why he's there. And mm-hmm. I don't know anything about his current status, so I don't know how scared to be. Like, There's no fear because you're all, can he die a hundred times? Can he, like, are there unlimited lives? Like, you don't know anything about that fucking game. So to me, the best bet for delaying it was not only all that, but most likely them looking at it and going, like, we need to actually get people to understand what it is. Like, you know, which Mm -hmm. does involve cutting demos out. You know, are they going to, you know, show it at a, you know, isn't the PlayStation event in, like, 
Uh, they're not showing anything at that. They're not showing it. Yeah. Okay. I remember they confirmed that because. Did they confirm that? Yeah. Plus, that would have been is, a this good, is Xbox here, but. I think I think next year I think this is going to get kind of the, the Red Dead treatment we were talking about how they really ramped it up last month or two and I feel like that's what's going to happen with Days Gone where, where like people are going to be like oh you, they're they're going to feel the wrath of the gamers for the next 5 months we're going to hear about how Days Gone is dead gone over with stupid forgotten and and then I imagine just in Sony fashion that there will be these trailers and and hype will start to gather around it provided that come that point in time that there aren't other games in the month of April yeah, worth exactly. caring about that's the chance that they take so yeah definitely we'll the biggest chance too we'll see next bit of news revolves around another big company called Activision this is probably the the topic I was most excited to talk about in this week's news lineup because I, I pulled from a lot of sources here and I think the conversation goes a lot deeper because the headline is Black Ops 4 sales hit $500 million in the first three days. That's amazing, right? Well, I looked at what Forbes had to say, which they had an excellent write-up on this, by the way. And they said, after all, one of the biggest games of the year was Far Cry 5. And it earned only hundred or $310 million across its entire launch week. The Avengers Affinity, Infinity War brought in $258.2 million domestically on its first weekend, making it the top opening weekend of any film and pulled in three or $640.9 million globally. So, you know, I know movies are cheaper and in technicality, Avengers did make more, but Black Ops 4 is up there as one of the biggest weekend launches in entertainment in 2018. The fact that it's up there with a Avengers movie, like the pin the pinnacle of the Avengers storyline right now is, is pretty crazy to me. Uh, furthermore, Black Ops 4 managed to disappoint disappoint investors as Investors.com mentions Activision stock has plummeted 8.3% to 71.81 on the stock market. It undercut its 50-day and 200-day moving averages on Thursday. There were apparent high expectations for this game. So yes, even though it sold $500 million worth in its first three days, there were high expectations that were not met. Activision stock also is being pressured by speculation that the company won't be showing its rumored Diablo 4 game at the BlizzCon show, Cohen analysis Doug Krutz said. That fan show runs from November 20 or November 2nd to the 3rd in Anaheim, California. Uh, the lack of a Diablo 4 announcement seems to rule out a 2020 launch, which has been assumed by Activision Bulls, Krutz says. He reiterated his market perform rating on the stock with a price target of 66. So, with all of this said, I want to ask, did the removal of a single-player component help or hurt Black Ops 4 ultimately? Because we see it's one of the biggest entertainment launches of this year. The biggest game launch this year, it seems. Granted, this is without a Red Dead, but this is weeks before Red Dead. People are spending this much money on it. Um, but we're seeing investors are disappointed. But yet, last year... Um, I don't have the stats for it, but it did perform better than last year's Call of Duty on its opening weekend. Um, so, with all of that out there, Carrick, what do you what do you feel? Do you think um, that Activision made a good choice here with no campaign, or how are you feeling about this? Yeah, all? because I personally feel that if it takes Battle Royale and actually does it right as gotcha. a AAA company. And a lot of companies tried. Fortnite does it, but not with shooters, like in the same way, not with a more realistic, whatever you want to call it, gritty look to it. I think most likely, I mean, also, we don't know how much that campaign would have cost. How much yeah. would, would the campaign have added 50, 70 million dollars onto the end uh, result? And then what would it have taken away? I think Black Ops launched at a perfect time. And I think that it's different enough from Red Dead, and there's no Red Dead online component that they're not going to eat each other. You know, they're not going to like, mm -hmm. you know, eat up each other's revenue. That to me, it, it, any way you slice it, if you add single player, you've add, you've added time, and you've or you've either added time or removed what you have in the battle royale. And from what I understand, because I've only played a little bit of it, but everybody I know, even people who hate Call of Duty normally really are having a good time with the game zombies or black ops or even the normal mp so interesting 
to me, I'm just like, I'm not in that because I just didn't have the timing. But it certainly seemed, I mean, every, every person I talk to is just like, holy shit, this is, this is like they get why people liked Battle Royale, but they needed this level of quality to see it. Gotcha. Like, for whatever reason, Fortnite wasn't doing it for. Interesting. Because with this game, it's it's surprising to me because I've, I've been playing it, and I play Call of Duty for a very different reason. I like to go on game battles, and I like to join a, a team with my friends, and we play random other teams online, and it's much more competitive. And so I always look at it first from that standpoint. Like, how does this game perform competitively? Um, and as a game mechanically, it's really well done because I like the 150 health. I like the stim regen where it's not automatic health comes back, but rather a actual equipment you use. Um, I like the gun balance, but the custom games in this title are so buggy and broken. Uh, this has been patched, but upon launch, the game would end, if you're playing Search and Destroy, it would end after seven rounds no matter what. Like, it would be 4-3, and the game would just end. Um, the game crashes a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I've already had three crashes. Um, sometimes when you're loading in, it'll do like a 5-4-3-2-1 countdown, and then it'll fade to black, and it'll stay black, and then it'll just boot you all to the main menu. The game's really buggy, which I'm very tolerant with. I've been totally honest about my perspective on bugs in the past like i'm usually not one to just mob and freak out about right all that right. stuff because you know at the end of the day um i get that it's not easy and also i, I sometimes find them funny but what bothers me about this and i know some people will think oh it's because you hate activision and it's like no i want activision to succeed you know because they, they do make some games i'm looking forward to sekiro i love overwatch i love diablo um, and I, I am enjoying Black Ops 4, but what's annoying about this to me is, okay, you cut out the multi or you cut out the campaign to focus on multiplayer, to go all in on that, all your resources are there. So why is it that one of the most fundamental basic features of your game, custom matches, and the title itself is so non-functionable? You know, it, it, it hardly works sometimes. You know, we'll, we'll try to start up a map because what are you, it's a, a map set of three, so best two out of three and sometimes we'll spend 20 fucking minutes getting this thing up and running because one person because like what happens is you're not going to play with a man down so you got eight people in a match and like mm -hmm. one person disconnects because their game crashed and they faded to black and got booted so then you got to end it restart it maybe this time everyone fades to black we get kicked out again or maybe this time the lobby bugs out and it'll say everyone's there but on someone else's screen you're not there which means you're probably going to be the person who gets kicked like it just sometimes doesn't work and it sucks because what is there mechanically is a very fun game that is well balanced which I, I didn't think would ever come out of my mouth and i love what's there because i enjoyed blackout during the beta um i haven't really jumped into the final product there but i love the competitive play and i really haven't taken a dive into zombies but like the, the game is buggy and like, like i said i usually don't care but when you're going to cut out a whole part of the game to invest those same resources in the multiplayer, I think that something like custom games would work totally fine. And the fact that it still is not fully functionable and that they that for some reason the game launched where they had to patch in that the, the search and destroy matches don't end after seven rounds. So, you know, when we first started playing the game, we'd play, and like I said, it'd be 4 or 3, the game would end, we'd have to start it back up, and then you couple in those bugs I mentioned earlier, and the game would crash a bunch of times, so a map that would take normally 8 minutes would take, like, up to 20 to 25 with all the crashes and everything accounted for, and it just got really frustrating. So, apologies on the rant, but as you can tell, I, I, it's, like, frustrating because I really am enjoying it, but there, there's just... It's frustrating that there's so much wrong with the game when they put the money there and said like we're going to clean it up because no single player have you had a the chance crew to play didn't it? have the ability to put the crew in it when it released Ugh. it didn't even have a multiplayer component in the crew and that never had a single player game and mm. probably had just as much money spent so it's like you never quite know um yeah a little bit not a ton okay. I've, 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 that i've played and um i would also say with bugs that it just may be one of the things where 
there's two things probably going on. One, the people who really, really like it probably don't experience as many bugs. Or two, which is even more, I think, liable to happen, is that they played PUBG prior and it was buggier. <laughs> That's true. Because PUBG, watching people try to shoot each other when PUBG first released on the Xbox was one of the most frustrating videos I've ever seen in my life. They, they couldn't even hit each other because the leg was so bad, mm -hmm. so much latency. So what may have happened, dude, is P when you come off those shit games and you're thinking, I don't like Fortnite because of the way it looks. Um, I don't like the free games on Steam that do this or even the paid games, early access on Steam, and here's this full game. I, I personally feel that there's a chance people are just either not experiencing it or they are, and they're like, yeah, but it's not as bad as what I experienced with PUBG. Gotcha. And it doesn't mean that they would... It doesn't mean that they would rate it a certain thing. It just means that they're getting that enjoyment out that's higher than, than the worry about those bugs. To me, if I was having the issues you were having, I would, there, you would hear about it in a review. Like if I was reviewing that and I had the bugs, the crashes yeah, you had, I'd be like, motherfucker. Like I would be well, legitimately angry. But yeah. you and I may not, I mean, the, the majority of people playing COD may not care about the bugs because the games aren't necessarily lacking in bugs anyway or weird shit. Yeah, yeah, you and, know? And, and a lot of people are willing to overlook it this time, and I get why, because the game is good. Like, I will say, full on, they did a good job, and I can't say I'm particularly surprised because I've said historically there's something about the Treyarch Call of Duties. There's just this level of effort and yeah. attention to detail on, on gun balancing and how maps play out that I've always just, I've loved all the Black Ops games. I loved World at War um, and I loved MW2. So it's a very short list of Call of Duty titles I've loved and most of them are populated by Treyarch games. So like, I'm not surprised. Um, I know some people may think it's biased, but like World War II, I didn't mind. I, I know you didn't like that one in particular because that one for you, I remember you said was really buggy in the single player campaign. It was buggy as fuck, yeah. Yeah. That, which was the major reason. Yeah. So it's like, I, I totally get why people are willing to look by. It's just for me, it's because it's in the custom games, which I feel is always a safe bet, right? You always feel like that's going to be the part of the game that just is, is fundamental, it works fine, it's something that didn't receive a lot of changes. In fact, compared to World War II, it regressed. Like in World War II, they had a full integrated game battle server. You literally click a button and matches you up with the people you're playing. All the rules are put into place. It's completely set up for you. Where this one, you got to set up the private match, invite everyone in. It's, it's all manual. What, so it, it actually took a step back in that regard. So you thought that, okay, it's back to basics again, whatever. But yeah, if it doesn't even work at times, I mean, that's just, it's annoying. It's tiresome. It's like, it, it, it's yeah. one of those, you know, we were talking earlier about like the fatigue factor with some games where you're just like, oh, I'm done. Like, I just don't want to play right now. And like, that's what it'll do when like the map ends three times in a row because of bugs. It's just very I mean, I, I, I also don't know what the server skew is. Uh, mm -hmm. Are people just not using the same systems as you like do they not care about custom and they're doing something else i don't know anything about the numbers like uh, uh, are people not responding because they just aren't using the same you know options you are or something gotcha. like that but i mean that can certainly happen at times where like i'll go into a game and be like this one element isn't very good but mm -hmm. then i'll find out that that's like a minimal element or something for whatever reason i think that there's enough casuals jumping into this that what you're talking about, they may not even do. So a lot of casuals yeah. may just be like smashing the play button. And I don't mean casuals in a bad way. I mean people who see this and go, fuck that, it looks better than PUBG. And I want to play it. So they're just smashing the A button. They're not setting up custom anything. Matter of fact, almost everybody I know in my Discord isn't even teaming up at all. They're quite literally just going into whatever game opens for them and gotcha. just playing it. So maybe they're just not... Maybe the, the people who've jumped into this title, plus the old people, like yourself and myself, who, who played the prior ones, maybe they just aren't seeing that as much. And that's why it's not being brought up. Because if you're not seeing it brought up everywhere, and I haven't seen any Reddits on this, if I was like seeing Reddit links where people are like, how the fuck is this, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to go like, yeah, why isn't that? Mm -hmm. But if you're not seeing it, then you also have to say, oh, maybe it's just because this one element 
I think is important and I use and we all use and everybody I know uses, but for whatever reason, this new version of the game is not hitting the same uh, the same mark for the other gamers right. that are out there. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just saying that. I'm, I assume no, I, that can happen. I, I think you're right, too, that just not a lot. Of, compared to how many millions of people are playing public, which works fine, compared to how yeah. many people play customs, like, I get why, but I feel like the competitive scene isn't as small as it once was with Call of Duty. Like, obviously, sure. Dota and, and League and Well, there's uh, Twitch Overwatch. stream right now. Of, yeah. of people playing it as in competitively. Yeah. I just don't know how they set that up. I don't know if... The, I have no clue. Like, it's literally just a private match. You send an invite. Like I said, back then... Back then, Jesus Christ. Back a year ago in World War II, you, you would literally just... It would say, like, uh, public, private game battles. And you literally click game battles, and it like it just has its own server that puts you there with, like, your team. And that was a little buggy at first, but it made sense because it was a brand new thing, right? So, like, when it went back... Like, they were like, all right, no dedicated game battle servers. We're going back, and we're having you host your own private match. So not only was there host advantage again, which is a huge deal, because if, if you're hosting that game, like, you, you don't have to worry about latency as much as Joe Blow on the other team. So that was the other thing that came with it. Like, there were negatives that came with it already. So you thought at least, okay, if it's going back to the fundamentals, this should just work off the bat, and it didn't, which is ultimately a little more frustrating like i said though i i don't want to get on a negative spree about it just because there is a lot to love about the, the gun balance obviously the icr is is ridiculous it's like a fucking laser beam but it's it reminds me of mw2 in the best ways possible like i loved mw2's gun balance i loved it because mw2 i'm sorry i have to go on a competitive spiel mw2 is full full of head glitches so again a gun like the acr in that game was so nice to have because you would literally, if you had a good enough shot, you would be able to pick people off of these head glitches, no problem. But they're talking about patching the ICR, and Black Ops 4 has a lot of really nasty head glitches. So it's like, I, I want them to leave it as is because, like, other other than the technical stuff, they have a really sound game here in in what they offer public match wise and and private private match wise with gun balance and and map control and how it's all split up. So I, I really like what they're doing. And it's it's the only Call of Duty in a really long time I can think of that launched. And I'm like, wow, I, I kind of just want this to stay, you know? So that's kind of where I stand on it, personally. Diablo I'll probably 4, though. play it in the next couple of weeks. Who knows? Yeah, if you got if you got like an hour to kill, it's worth just hopping into some pubs and, and seeing how it rolls. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's... I don't know why. I just... I, I think I just got busy with something, and and I, I don't know. Yeah, I just I guess right now I'm just not into a, not into like those kind of shooters. Well, hey man, but I, speaking I of getting why. busy, we can talk about what we're expecting to crack on our game of the year list and what we're playing. So what what have you been? Well, well the, 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 can I speak this podcast or fucking what? Uh, what have you been playing, Carrick, my good friend? <laughs> um, Call of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I don't know if that I'm not near far enough to, um, to like say if that's you know gonna be on the top list or whatever. Right. Um, Sp <laughs> Spider Man DLC, other games I can't talk about, but mm -hmm. um, Spider Man and its DLC. I think probably one of the few times where DLC is worth it, and I mean worth it by like the wait. You know, like oh god, here we go, you gotta wait, and then got to jump back into the game and all that shit so um those two most right now and then a okay. bunch of just generic games like i mean we jump into we did a bunch of that uh, generation zero the new game by avalanche mm -hmm. who did rage uh, or who are doing rage too but they're also doing this it's like a left for dead in the 1980s uk forests with cool. robots and uh and playing a bunch of that it's not amazing but it's been enjoyable that's pretty much it. Cool. Yeah, for me, I've been playing. Uh, I've been on my Switch a lot lately. I um, oh, so have I. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah, I've I I missed my Switch. Um, before the Bethesda event for Fallout seventy six, I had the plan to start the Messenger. And mm. what review did I get wrapped? Up? I got wrapped up in my AC Odyssey review, where the embargo lifted the day before I left. So I had to grind out AC. 
So I never had a chance to start the messenger because once I beat AC, like you, you know, once you beat that game, you're like, okay, I can fucking yeah. breathe. That's a big game. I want to just go to the event now in my case. Um, and so when I came back home, I had finally started the messenger a few, like a week after. So I've been playing that. That's an indie game that's largely inspired by Ninja Gaiden, but has a really cool mechanic where you kind of change time periods. So when you change time periods, it's represented in the art and music. So you go from 8-bit to 16-bit and then like back and, and the environment and the levels change and the enemies change. And it's really, really cool. It's a great game. <laughs> uh, it's got a wonderful soundtrack. I love the boss fights. It, it's definitely a hidden gem for sure. And I am going to make a video down the line talking about it more because I love it so much for what it is. Um, I, I hope that it has found an audience. It was actually really cool. The developers had reached out to me and they're like, hey, would you want to code? Because I, I, I'd use their music in my Fallout 76 vlog. And they're like, you know, we, we, we saw that. Like, would you want to code for it? And I was like, oh, I'm already, I'm already playing the game, actually. It's funny you mentioned that. And like, I sent them a picture and they're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. So that was a pretty cool interaction. But I've been playing that. Um, I've been playing Dragon Ball Fighters on my Switch a lot. Still, that's you know, while we're on the topic of games that are probably going to crack our game of the year list, that's probably going to be one for me because while that's been an up and down ride for me, ultimately I adore that game. Um, and then, man, a lot of fighters when you fucking think about it. Jesus Christ, I've been playing Soul Calibur VI. Um, that just dropped, like I mentioned earlier. I got my review code for that Tuesday. Um, I started it up on Wednesday, played a little bit. Um, I, I, I love love the amount of single player content there it's about fucking time dude like i i don't know about you how how much have you like dug into that game i beat it uh, oh, i did it. all the single, okay I did, I did all the single player i'm not really in love with it but i, I get why people i don't know mm -hmm. i i feel like it sort of short changes you on the costume the creative oh character. yeah Compared to the original, it also really short changes you on the stages. The number of stages compared to the last one is fucking brutal. Um, gotcha. What I liked is, um, what's the fucking term for the rock, paper, scissors move? The oh, edge, uh, the um, reverse edge or something like that. Reverse yeah, whatever that edge. is. I actually, I know that people are going to hate it, but I actually, when when I had a friend come over so we could test it, he was like, dude, I, I don't like Soul Calibur. I sort of dig that. Like, it, there's something about it that at least makes me feel like I'm not getting my ass handed to me all the time. Um, the thing with the single player, though, is, Maddie, if you are not a Soul Calibur fan, it is the worst translated, worst stories, worst voice acting. <laughs> it, it, so, like, I don't see it because well, I which know... which story? This two. All of them. All of them, okay. I'm, I'm talking about the... the um, sorry, I'm talking about the soul, the top choice, the soul... Um, because uh, there's like the mission we, mode where you create your own character. Yeah, that one's bad. But I'm actually okay. talking about the one where you pick the storylines. Okay, I haven't done. I haven't done. I haven't done oh, okay. that one yet. So it's just it's funny because it's like what you and I would. So if you play Persona, you hear some of that, or you play Yakuza, and you're like, I get, I get where this is coming from. Soul Calibur has always cracked me up because the shit doesn't make sense. And the best thing is the first fight I had, my guy comes out, says nothing. Doesn't say a fucking word. Mm -hmm. And the enemy comes out and is like, why don't you just shut up? And I don't know why that cracked me up, but I'm like, that's how it started. Uh... And then suddenly fighters are talking about like galleons filled with witches. You know, the announcer guy is like, you know, he's like, oh, I love the announcer. Full of witches will, will bring <laughs> trouble to the land or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? That I do like, I, I like it, but I know that a lot of people I've shown it to are like, who fucking translated? But it's Soul Calibur. Like, that Soul Calibur story is never, right? Like, it's yeah. never made a bunch of sense. So See, I'm okay I, with that. I like the, I haven't, as I mentioned, I haven't tried the story mode. I like the You did the mode. create a character mission I, mode? I like yeah. that because it, it's, it's, usually I feel like so many RPG mechanics are like shoehorned in the games, but I actually liked how they did this one with some like little tiny choices there, but also like, how they do progression where you unlock different weapons and because yep. they're assigned to the fighting styles of different 20 plus characters on the roster um that that like you're constantly fighting differently and so it's a good way to learn the game too but it's a, a nice kind of mindless thing where you just read some text and and you 
go through the motions. I, I really like that because when you look at fighting games, like I, I've been playing Dragon Ball Fighters this entire year, and I love that game so much, but I literally go on and go straight to multiplayer because there's no quality single player content. There's a story mode, which I actually thought was underrated, and there's a tournament mode and an arcade mode. And the tournament and arcade mode, as far as I'm concerned, are, are like the one and the same thing. They're they're very much the same. They 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 honestly suck, if I'm totally truthful about it. But when you look at Soul Calibur, it's like okay, you got a mission mode that ties to the character creator, and then you got the separate stories, which I can't have an opinion on too much. But then you have the arcade, and then you have versus battle, and then there's online play. Like sometimes I want to come on and just play the fighting game, and I don't want to like get my ass beat or beat some ass online like i just want to play you know how like in uh injustice 2 they had like the, the the challenges and events every day in that global mode or whatever it was called mm-hmm. um obviously soul caliber doesn't have that but i like how they have an assortment of single player options where i can go in and sometimes i just want to toy around with another fighter and so i can go into arcade and just fight a series of eight fighters who get tougher each time and enjoy that um i i really like that about the game you know i i can really appreciate the assortment of content that's there personally yeah yeah i mean we'll we'll, we'll have to see once you do all of it what you think i think for me my love started to drag mm-hmm. like i at some point i don't know what it is but at some point i just started like being less and less interested i think um, it's because like even one thing i've noticed immediately was like before the fights like, one thing that's really picked up in fighting games, like you see in Injustice, Dragon Ball, um, literally every fighting game, is, like, there's unique dialogue interactions between most characters, no matter who's fighting who, and it kind of yeah. fills the gaps in on some of the, the underlying story from previous games, and, like, oh, there's history between these two, I wonder what's going on, you know to look for that. And, like, this game has, like, I've, I've played it for a good couple of hours, and I've only had that happen once, where, like, two yeah. characters just said something to one another, Instead of being like, all right, I'm ready to fight. And then they'll say, like, yeah, you need, like you said, you need to shut up. You know, it's like, okay. Um, let's I will also say, I don't know about you. What version are you playing? What uh, console? Uh, just regular PS4. I, man, I got to go back and play the other one. But I would swear to shit, man, that thing doesn't look very good graphically. Like, mm. I don't know what it is about the lighting, which definitely looks flat. But something about it. I don't know. Like the special moves always look cool. I've always liked those yeah. Soul Calibers. Um but there was something about the graphics overall and it might just be also the lack of variability. You know, with only 12 stages versus 20, it may just be that where there just wasn't as many and so your brain doesn't get like yeah. that that surprise um overall. I like the character creator. That's been pretty fun. I'm 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 not a big fan of fucking how little there is compared mm-hmm. to others. That that shit you know is coming it's in DLC. It's strange because <laughs> Namco It's very strange. Namco put out Tekken 7 last year. I know With it's a tons. different developer, but like holy crap, yeah, that that yeah. character creator in that game was like fucking fantastic. You could make whoever yeah. the hell whatever you want in that game. And in this game, yeah. I got excited because I saw, yeah. like, you can make a humanoid, you can make a lizard, a vampire. Yeah, that, I got excited um, when I, t- I picked yeah. the, the stone dude, the co- Colossus. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, man, like, you know, and imagine that with the options from Tekken 7, like, all the clothes you can put on and shit. Yep. And it's, it's and then you play the story mode and you're getting gold and I'm like, okay, there's going to be a store here where you can buy new clothes. I get it. Like, they want me to play this story mode to unlock cosmetic stuff. And, and, like, all you do is buy weapons. And that was, like, the number one biggest disappointment. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why? Why so yeah. little? You know, because I... It, and it's what's really odd is they give off this idea that, like, okay, there's going to be a lot of cosmetics. Because, like, when you open up the menu, you see, like, one of the first things you see is a giant pink afro. Yeah. And then you see, like, all these different anime hairstyles. And you're thinking, like, okay, there's going to be a little bit more. But, like, they just give you all the options right away. Um, um, you will unlock, just so you know, you will unlock the second currency when you do the other single player content, the, the soul soul points points, which does allow you to buy this stuff for your creative character. Um, there is more stuff. Well, you, you'll have to see there isn't, it, it, it's really interesting. Have you tried to, have you tried to create a character and pick any of the options? Cause if you do, it'll state you need 200 SP to buy this. So the shit's there, but it's not actually there. Only wow. some of it is. 
Yeah. So go into your creative character next time and start clicking on hats. And half the hats will say, blink, and they'll pop up on your character's face. Others will be like, you need 200 SP points. And you're all, really? And hmm. but there, but like when I'm okay in the in the mission mode when you go into the character creator, everything's there though, right? Everything's there and available, and you can just do yeah, what you want. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah it's it's odd. It, that's why I mean, there's a lot of videos where people are like, "What the fuck?" That if there's anything people are complaining about, it's that in particular. Um, yeah, which I get and, totally. And, yeah, which I get totally as well. It was it was odd, and when you go in. Like the, I can't remember what it was, but I think there was a top hat. There was a top hat. There were some horns. And I think it was the horns that were free, but the top hat wasn't. And I was like, what? But if I remember right, I'll have to look at my um, video because uh, when, uh, remember, I was hopped up on drugs like a motherfucker. But <laughs> when, when, when I'm searching, I don't remember an icon stating this one has to be bought. They just were all, they looked there. Yeah, like they, they were and like then grayed you, out. For example. Yeah, they weren't like, or the, a fucking present, you know, like in some, I think Virtual Fighter even did that, where it looked like a birthday present, and you like bought it, and then that present went away, mm -hmm. indicating you had bought it. So, it was weird to have two currencies, and you know me, maybe we've talked about this, I think we have, but I fucking hate games with two currencies, or oh, more. It usually indicates about DLC, <laughs> monetization, it usually indicates something that I don't like. And yeah, that strange. has no reason. When you're playing it, you're like, because you're. I'm, I was doing the level you're doing. You're getting these stories, and they're like, do you want to choose the bad guy thing or the good guy thing? Do you want to kill this guy? You know, you're as you go through, and you're like, oh wow. But if you notice, it's only gold. And then you go into the other one. And you translate the soul points, and it, it goes to soul points. And you'll start seeing stores in the single player that you're playing, the creative character one. You're going to start seeing stores that if you go in, it'll have an option saying translate. SP to gold. Yeah, yeah, I unlocked that just today, actually. Yeah, so there's... And I was confused, because I was like, oh, I can yeah, buy artwork I can see from why. the museum, but I don't yep. want to do that. Like, I want to unlock items for my character. Yeah, it's weird, dude. It's... I don't know what they're doing. That's what I'm... I think that's what hit me the most, is I had... You know, I liked the last one. I didn't right. love it, but I liked the last one. And it felt like there was a lot. This one... Um, somebody on Resetera, I think, or Neogath broke it down, and there was there was a pretty big, like, drop in what was available, which was a little sad. Yeah. I mean, overall, it's still a Soul Calibur game. Mm -hmm. It's still got Lizard Man, which is my fave. <laughs> so I never played Soul Calibur Five, so that's the thing is like I, I loved Four, I loved Two, um, I played Two on the GameCube because of Link, um, but I never right, played and then Five. So was four, was four was Darth Vader Yoda? Yes. Five was Ezio. Five. Ezio. The nice thing about this is there is no platform exclusive character. Yeah. Witcher come, Geralt comes with everything. And I got to admit, as a character from another fiction, I'm pretty okay with him. I like. Fits I well. thought. Yeah, I thought he was going to be. I mean, not to be rude. Well, he, he's got a couple Bruce Lee kicks where you're like, what the fuck is. You know, Garrett pulling this kick off. Like, this kick is a little goofy. And it's interesting Overall, hearing him though, yell as a fighting character versus, like, how yeah. calm, cool, and collected he is in game, no matter yep. what the fuck happens. Like, in this and game, his he's voice like, actor ah! ain't great. I, as uh, Mike Williams was saying on our earlier podcast, he was like, whoever did the voice acting, it was like, hey, Bob, man, you can talk out loud. Come here and do the voice acting. Mm -hmm. uh, that I'm not a I'm not in love with his voice acting, but I love his entry. I think I think he's fun to play, actually. His dual swords. Um I will say one thing. I don't know about you. I would love for there to be more customization of weapons. It yeah. really feels like they have not stepped up in the one place that they're unique. Soul Calibur is known for weapons. Mm -hmm. What I want is I want 1,000 types of nunchucks, motherfuckers. I want, like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to be able to put fucking balloons at the end. I want to yeah, be able to put dragon heads. Yeah, they didn't get crazy with it. Cause, cause, yeah. Like I guess I keep looking at Tekken just because it's the, a, a recent Namco fighter. It's got with the 700 same unlocks, I think. Yeah, Tekken it, it's insane, dude. And like they're funny ones too. Like It feels like in Soul Calibur, um, I get why it takes itself seriously to an extent, but it took itself so seriously that um, they tried to like limit the character creation options. And, and one of the first character creations I saw was like a giant scaly lizard walking around with a huge dick. And he had Voldo's move set, so he just like humped the air. Yep. Yeah. The, it was the it was funny as shit, but I was like, I feel like this is kind of working against what the developers wanted. So 
with the soul points in there, do you feel like this is, I, I, I can't help but feel so because of all the multiple currencies already, but do you think they're going to add like packs of new yeah. cosmetics? Un- yeah, unfortunately. Seems like, unfortunately, way. dude, they're missing a lot of stuff. I mean, oh, just talk about stages alone. I think it's 12 versus 20 or 12 versus 22 or some crazy amount. And I was just like, and you can tell when you go in to pick the stages, you're like, this does not seem like there's many stages. Even the way you choose characters is weird. Like, I don't know if you know this, but I think it's on your second character that you can't even choose a custom. You can choose the custom only on the one player. So oh, yeah. there's some almost, uh, do you remember how Street Fighter V came out and it was missing its single player? And people were oh, like, "Oh, I see. I didn't pay attention to that because I don't. I'm not good at Street Fighter at all, so I I don't. So touch okay, it. <laughs> so it was missing its single player, and like the mode was missing, and they added wow. it later. And okay. the, there were various, um, like I think the arcade mode was missing. It was like just a that. test mode. Yeah, it feels like this is the what's happened here is that it's almost like a beta, and I don't know if they're going towards the competitive market, um, Seems or not. Right from what I've heard. It, it seems like that, but then the com- competitive market yesterday released the leg report on that game, and it's fucking horrendous. Mm. So it's like, I don't know if competitive market's going to pick up on it. Like, one of the YouTubers who does competitive did a bunch of frame analysis, and it's not great. So I don't know if the competitive market will pick it up. I wish they would have done more to front load it. I love the single player stuff, even if it's goofy, you know. I like, like, it'll be like, do you want to kill this person or say, like, you know, the other character, you'd be like, okay, I'll, I'll kill him. You know, and it's a red to tell you, it's a, you're, that's the bad guy choice. Yeah, yeah. And it'll give you that thing. I love when it's like, you've tilted towards evil. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's got a goofy <laughs> take on good versus evil, uh, almost yeah. cliche. Yeah. And it's fun in that way where it's, it's it weird is. that the character creator takes itself so seriously like create the most epic badass ever i'm like dude i want to remake todd howard and absolutely conquer all of this mode and everything it yep. has to offer just so i can say i did that and and make a fucking meme about it you know i think that's hilarious but um i'm enjoying that game personally um what else have i been playing yeah just the messenger soul caliber dragon ball um i guess yeah i'm just wrapping those up before the beta because that's going to be what for fallout that's going to be what takes up my time what day is that maddie that is the same day you are on the co-optional podcast tuesday the 23rd 23rd oh yeah i forgot him jesus christ i gotta make sure i remember to even go <laughs> i just up remember because i saw up. it on twitter i was like oh that's the same day um yeah i i, I gotta i don't know man i'm a little bit more excited but not necessarily because of like anything the game's offering just like a couple of my friends are like getting it you know in the discord and they're like hey you know we'll play and the idea of like you said maybe playing it single player and just uh disappearing from society for a little while i sort of think that that might be what i do too is yeah because I'm, I'm not quite sure i'm it's... gonna review it in a typical review fashion mm-hmm. um you know what it's but... like remember how i played injustice 2 in and out dropped off I feel like, and, yeah. and and then you stuck with it, and you were like, "Dude, I'm still." I, dude, I played it. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There yes. you go. Yeah. So, yeah. you got to be filthy at this game, by the way. You play it so much, but no, oh. no. Nope. I mean, I can. I, I, no. It, well, do you mean online? It, against my friends, I'm fine. But online, no. I still just like you, dude. I get, <laughs> like, I, see, I, I, find I, that I crazy. do. Yeah, and, and you're right. Like the online, and that's why you don't like it as much because yeah. you've stated you know it's like you go online and you like projectile heavy or what have you um but do you know what i love i just like the zing when you open a mother box i don't mm. like it's it's my it's my jam like i will just i'll be salivating like uh, no this is like a microtransaction for somebody who gambles a lot <laughs> but i'll see that fucking thing and i'll be like do you want to open your mother box i'm like oh yeah and i'll be all it does that cool and then it's like boom 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 and it yeah, shows it just armor. Hits with all the good stuff it's good aesthetic yeah and it it is it is so that's that's why i got it but, or that's why i like it but um yeah, i feel like i'm gonna be like that with soul caliber at least from the outside looking in after like five hours with it just i enjoy because i haven't gone on it and been like i want to you know because there's some days like when i'm reviewing a game or when i have a, a day off and i'm like all right today is gonna be a day i game and i'm just gonna go all in on this game and like give it all my time right. um I haven't had that feeling with Soul Calibur where it's like, I want to play Soul Calibur all day. It's like when my, like if it's a late night on PS4, I'm on with my friends and I want to play something, but like not pay attention to a story. 
you know, I'll flip through some of the text in the in the the mission mode, and I'll do that. You know, it's like perfect for that type of stuff. And just sometimes, yeah. like, you know, I don't want to pick up the switch, but it's like, oh yeah, an hour. Yeah, I'll just I'll dick around the arcade mode in, in Soul Calibur. Like it's it's that type of game where I'm, I feel like I'm just gonna return to kind of like I did for a while with Tekken, but Tekken didn't offer that same amount of single player content. That's why I'm so pumped about this game because I was like, wow, there's there's a lot to to take in here. Like once you know, I gradually chip my way through the mission mode and all its side content. I'll get to move over to the the story mode, chip through that, and you know, get yeah. really familiar with the game. So it's like the story mode. Just to warn you, it looks lean when you first start because mm-hmm. it shows a book and another book to indicate the starting and the ending, and then sometimes it'll show multiple books to indicate like chapter breaks, right? Yeah. But that's not the full number of fights. It can be far bigger so you'll there's one i think it's maxi who's got like two and i was all fuck man this is going to be a fast like it's it's going to be a couple fights yeah and i click it and it was you know it was like 12 fights and that's when i started realizing as i went through the different characters that it looks like it's just a couple it's it's again it's a little it's not the greatest way of showing you what's there um but but though there's a lot a lot more there what level are you in the um Created character, uh, do you twelve? Okay, oh, oh, okay, yeah, okay, pretty yeah, early. So you got a lot of stuff, and you're still. And the cool thing is, you can still fight people way above your level. Yeah, which is always nice. That's what I love because I, I actually did a mission way above my level where the guy was like twenty, but we were on yeah, like a very right. slippery area, so we're all dashing around the uh, the stage, and so I was just like doing it to maneuver, and then like he dedicated to an attack, and I'd sidestep him, and he just sent himself off the off yep. the edge of the stage yeah. and so I, cool. I have him ring himself out and that's what i love about that mode is like okay they're they're doing like extra damage uh bonus to to counter attacks the slippery stage stuff is great um i i really like what they've done to spice it up you know will will it like down the line become repetitive or whatever maybe but right now i'm, I'm really enjoying what's there just as like you you do in your reviews like a fun factor kind of thing like it's just a fun game so. I think also it's more slick than like an injustice, which I love, is still it's got some weight. It feels to it. like everybody's like locked. Oh yeah, you know, like fucking Gojiru karate. Everybody's <laughs> locked into a specific thing. With one nice thing about Soul Calibur is it just feels a little slicker. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not very good at double uh, at uh, at uh, sidestepping at, at like 360 in that like virtual fighter. I'm very good for some reason. It might be the PS4 controller. I'm not a big fan of like its setup. Yeah, because you gotta really press. Yeah, um, but I like that you can do that in that game. I haven't got great at that, but it feels slicker regardless. It just feels slicker as a game. It feels a little bit more, um, just a little bit more fluid than uh, than an in Injustice. Injustice just feels canned. You know, you can feel that everything is like exact, and I sort of dig Soul Calibur's like just overall slickness that it has to it yeah it's, it's, definitely it's that more gateway anyway. movement system that they've got yeah. in place that i think gives it and because everyone no one feels slow like when you're walking towards someone even like nightmare like the biggest fucking character in the game is not like dragging his sword like he's like oh, dashing no, he's, at yeah. you sidestepping he's got like this huge yeah, swing slow. yeah so that's that's what I, I like too it's definitely frantic um, uh, also the the what do you call it what'd you call it the the edge the one where you edge, rock edge. scissors yeah, one of the things I love about that is, and no other game's done this that I know of, I love that it blocks that attack. Mm-hmm. So it's used as a block, and then they if you hit successfully, it. it then turns into this bigger thing. And I think that's cool because for some people, they may not be the greatest at blocking for whatever reason. I love that Soul Calibur is a button for blocking. I know a lot of people like pressing back. You're wrong. Just joking. You're not. <laughs> I hate it, though. Um, I love that in Soul Calibur, where you ha- so you have your block button, yeah, you but you nice. also have this reverse edge thing where you're like, if I hit it perfectly, and in Soul Calibur you can tell one two three combo, one two three four combo, you can sort of pick up on things, and if you can hit it just right, you know you can turn a battle a battle around a little easier, I think, in Soul Calibur than you can in other games. I I, I, yeah. I would say the AI is a little. I can tell what they're gonna do. Oh, I will say this. Check this out, Manny. The AI, always susceptible to a sprint throw at the very beginning of the match. I've not yet failed. Yeah, yeah. I can sprint, throw them, and then they're on. And they're like, hello, and then they fight me. But that's the one thing I've noticed. 
Yeah, that's because what I always do is a dash. I think it's just that first yeah. attack always hits because I dash in and I press square, it square, like... and it's always one, two, boom. And then yeah. they're like, all right, let's fight now. Like, you got my attention. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're like, okay, bitch, I was going to be nice, but yeah. now I'm not. Yeah. It reminds me of a boss fight in The Messenger. I, I remember um, t he it was it was the demon boss, which was like one of the final bosses before you have to start collecting music notes. I think it was the final boss before you start collecting music notes. And... I found this exploit where, because it was such a hard boss fight, before it starts, you've got, you can like run in and do something where uh, he doesn't attack you at all and you just stand there and just swing your sword away and hit him and then he like wakes up a couple of seconds later. So you like get a little advantage in the start, which is, it was so helpful because that was a really hard boss fight. But yeah, Soul Calibur's got a similar thing like that. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. As for games cracking the game of the year list, any you wanted to point out today you know it's funny because we we were I, I was saying 10 games and you were like i don't know if i have 10 blah 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 but then what i did was i went back and looked at my open critic page mm -hmm. and i got games you and i had both played and i was gonna send the email and i fucking forgot so let me real quick open up open critic because um i gotta say i don't know if i so we played more than 10 right Right. So like I I personally feel like I can come up with I can probably come up with ten, but I think to me what I'm gonna try to do is go back to old games and sort of come forward because otherwise you know, I mean obviously I think a game like God of War is gonna be on there. But yeah. there's also so just looking through, for example, I really loved and I don't think you played it or liked it i can't remember which i love the free game the awesome adventures of captain spirit i which liked is it. the game oh, yeah, okay i like that a lot um i liked uh wreck fest a lot i liked vampire i think we'll agree i loved oh, yeah. detroit become human I haven't played that um going back uh god of war uh far cry 5 no wouldn't be on there um oh a way out dude i loved a way out that really short six hour wow, cinematic this game year, didn't it? Man. yeah wow and so that's 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 what's funny warhammer vermintide 2 came out this year and so once i started looking way back gravel very fun racing game now, again if we're just going to the top 10 games not the best games but 10 full games i think we can come up with some incredible ones because it is crazy january 22nd was fucking dragon ball z like you said you know, that'll for sure be on the list. Absolutely. Uh, Monster Hunter World. Huge Probably. for me. I ride a really good time. Will it be one? No. 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 But it'll be on there. Um, yeah, so it's, I, I, I would say for me, to go odd on my example, I would say a way out is on, you know, like, top top 10 games. You know, I've played a lot of games, but I really enjoyed a way out with a friend. I, we played that. I think the price was right. And I love the fact that you only need one copy to play the game. They, yeah. that needs to happen so as often as possible. Such a cool deal. So I would say that one will be on the list somewhere. Mm. That one I thought was kind of like, uh, not, not like it was a bad game, but it, there were so, so many parts that were so ridiculous that it was fun. Mm -hmm. um where a friend and i did play through in one sitting and when we liked what was there because it was just like we still joke about that game to this day about how uh leo i think his what his, his name was um his voice actor man um my friend tyler who i played with to this day he still says uh vinny pass me some sheets because the way he says it just he thought was the funniest thing um what else did i see i'm looking at my list right now it's to my right because i i write for me i write down every game i beat because come this time of the year i know it's easy to get so focused on the holiday period you forget that, oh shit like yep. you just heard me now with the way out i was like that came out this year right um you forget such a long year that like there are games that come out in january that you think may have came out late last year um that you've really enjoyed that you can add to the list so you know for me i probably would slap kingdom come on that list i really i like that game a pretty good amount um it was it was buggy at times um but i admired the developer's dedication to get it fixed as soon as possible i also liked how communicative they were with their audience where um like whenever i put out honest harsh feedback about the game like 
this doesn't affect it being on my list, but like the developers would message me and thank me, be like, "Hey, we're, we're like we see the comments, we see what you're saying, and we're we're fixing that now." Just so you know, it's like, okay, cool. Um, I liked that direct line with them because um, then you see in turn stuff was addressed fast, and that was that was great. But I also liked how um, exploration dependent it was. Um, the combat was fresh. So that was that was a game that could probably, if I were to do a top ten, which I, I like, I said I don't think this has been a good year for gaming, but I just don't think I liked enough games this year, man. Where um, usually what I do is I'm looking at my list now and I go back and play games that I missed or that I had a nostalgia itch for. So I played games like Yakuza Kiwami. Like I would slap that on my game of the year list in a heartbeat, yep. but it was the first one, which came out I think last year. Yeah, so I can't. And I number two would definitely be on my list for this yeah, year. Exactly, and I haven't had a chance to play two, but I've played. I played. Um, let's see here. Bayonetta one, like that's like ten hours I could have put into something else, but I was just like, you know what? Like Bayonetta just three got announced. I'm in the mood for it. The 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 re release came out for one and two. I was like, fuck yeah! Like I want to play this fucking game, so I did. Um, did you do Forza Horizon four? I never played it. Oh, wow. Okay. That was just, yeah, that's the thing. I'm very picky now when it comes to the fall period um, because I, I literally have reviewed so many games this fall. Um, but it's just, you know, for me, like, instead of reviewing that, I, I was like, okay, I have to have my list and I have to stick with it. You know, I got an offer to review Lego, which I, I wanted to, but I just my, you know, I'm glad I didn't accept because... I had to review Thronebreaker, which I really, really enjoyed. Like, that's one that would absolutely end up on my list if I were to do a top 10. Um, I know not Gwent's not everybody's speed, but, dude, it is just creative. Um, the the freeform gameplay there with how you build your decks and how each battle has, like, a unique card on the other side of the field that you kind of have to work around and tackle differently. It's just so mentally engaging. It's so fun. The choice and consequence is like a point and click adventure game and there's so much replayability and it's thirty dollars. Like it's it's such a good game. Like I cannot recommend it enough. So that's another one that would probably sneak its way onto my list. AC Odyssey easily. That was a great one. Would that be on your list? Because I know you you went back and played as Alexios. I didn't even do that and I was like, fuck yeah, I like this game. Yeah. Yeah. Odyssey would be on the list somewhere. Forza. Um Yakuza for sure. I when I was scrolling through my games, Spider Man, of course, but I'm trying not to yeah, Spider-Man for you sure. You know, main ones. Um, but for me, like, two indies are, like, the King's Bird. King's Bird is fucking awesome. And then um, Banner Saga 3, which I Ooh, really yeah. liked. Um, I, I thought there were some issues with it, but overall, again, if we're just doing a top 10 and we're not saying it's the best game, it would certainly be on, like, the top 10 of mm. games I've played and just enjoyed. So it, I'm actually less... It's not, for me, it's not that I uh, didn't like as many games as you, um, you know, or you were saying that you're not quite sure you liked enough to make a 10. I do find, though, that I disliked a great deal more games this year than I have in the Same. past. Same. Like, there were more games where I'm like, I don't, the crew, too, was like, <laughs> rent, almost, I mean, I mean, I was close to saying never never touch on that game it just did not extinction was not good um there a couple of vr games i did were not good so that to me is what i think is is interesting very disappointing game for the, for me this year attack on titan 2 hands down holy crap that i didn't even didn't even come near the first one that, let alone yeah, improve. Dude, the first one was so so yeah. good i put i 40 hours for my life it literally disappeared like you didn't even have to know the anime or the anime or the manga to enjoy that game and that game just grabbed me and did not let go and the second one oh my god it was literally the first one again with like two extra hours of gameplay for season two and i was like what the fuck were they thinking man it's make, like uh, they, they were probably thinking make money on like the well yeah yeah it's obvious what they were thinking it was just <laughs> What, what where were their morals at? I guess Fallout all... Four VR would that's also an, be on my list. Interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting Even one. though I rated it a rent, um, because it, it required so much fixing, 
now mm-hmm. they've patched all that in and I'm telling you, dude, I don't want to even say out loud how many numbers I have in that fucking game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I don't think there's it, anything wrong with you saying, like, hey, rent this game, or hey, wait. Like, I, for example, AC Odyssey, I was like, yeah, easily on my list. But yet in my review, I was like, yeah, wait for, like, a small, small dip just because yeah. I was a little unsure of microtransactions and, and, and level gating, and I'm glad I stuck with that because it became a very contentious issue when the game launched. However, the game on its own is really, really good, and I love Cassandra as an assassin. So it's like, yeah, absolutely, right. that game's going on my list. You know, that uh, top ten, yes, top five. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of games left unbeaten. You know that, like, I, for example, Hero Academy. I could totally, you know, I don't like to foresee games cracking my list because I feel it sets unreal expectations. But I feel like Hero Academy could because. I loved how there's a hero storyline, there's a villain storyline. It's very comic book fashion, um, true to the anime. There's a lot of customization there, hopefully more than Soul Calibur Six. Once again, this is from the same company, so <laughs> we shall see. But um, I, know, I have high hopes for cool that game. Cool too, dude. We've got so many good games coming up, right? I mean, yeah, it's it, not like, over yet. or sorry, I shouldn't say good, but we have so many. Yeah, I mean, you haven't done Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, right? I did. I like that. Okay. Game. I think so that game Shadow is a bad rap. The... Yeah, so do I. So there's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but then there's like Hitman. There's Battlefield. Hitman, there's holy crap. And Hitman 2, not to... Like, I went from thinking Hitman... I went from not knowing what I was thinking about Hitman 2. Because I personally think the graphics that I've seen have not really wowed me at all compared to the original. Especially that... Yeah, especially like the city level in, in the first one was just Paris. Was I mean, all these different places... But the more I read about even the multiplayer, the ghost mode, when I saw that mode and what you can do in that, I was like, that's the shit. That mode right there, I will play for weeks. Like, I was blown away by that mode. What is the ghost mode? It's basically two people in their own worlds doing their own assassinations, and you're doing, like, chains of assassinations. You can't be seen even once or you lose. But the cool thing is some things in your world affect affect the other person so if you find a box and there's a disguise in it and you take it that person's box is now empty but additionally you have these ghost coins and you can toss them and that will alert his npcs to him so you can see him at all times but you can't see anybody else in their game world you can just see him as a ghost moving around doing his own thing Hmm. but you can fuck with him with like these ghost coins or stealing oh, stuff. And, and so cool. I immediately was like, wait a minute, what if I just steal the stuff? But what if I don't want it? I just steal it and drop it on my floor. It won't be in his game. So it's like I was coming up with meta games already going like, okay, when I jump in, I'm going to throw a coin, alert everybody so he can't get to, and I'm just going to sprint to every place, remove all the shit from the boxes so he can't <laughs> use them. Even if I won't use them, it, just different things like that. That to me is awesome. Sean Bean, the actor, he's the first exclusive target, and right. um, I love the exclusive target system. It's the cool. idea that they went and got actors is I don't know why, but Gary hunting Gary Busey was hilarious in the first one. Mm-hmm. So the idea that you're going to be hunting actors, I I just hope they get Tom Cruise. Like <laughs> I would kill if they were like exclusive target Tom Cruise. I'd be like, oh yeah. So. <laughs> That game, you know, Battlefield. Um, somebody, uh, somebody mentioned a couple other games that I even forgot now, and I had forgotten when we were in this list. We've got some shit coming out. Battlefield's kind of off my radar personally. I just it is mine too, but I mean, it's a big game, and it may turn out to be amazing. Yes, totally yeah. possible. It's, just for me, I but, yeah, I would say it's on, for me. It's where Black uh, or uh, uh, Blackout is where I then, probably won't dive at it. And then Fallout, but, you know, Fallout comes out in November. Yeah, I know we talk about it a lot on the channel, but like, there's just for for those out there who are like trying to pick what game to spend their money on, like, holy crap, you know, it's so yeah. Much. And I mean, how like that game even like how are you gonna like all these online games? How do you review them? Like that's the big thing as well. That game will be fun to see. Because I won't have any issue with how anybody wants to review it. You can review it whatever way you want. But right. I think it'll be fun to like, look at it and go, okay, I'm going to review it this way. Or I'm going to dive into this. You know, 
like, do you do a, a monthly thing where it's like next month I'm going to tell you, you know, how the server count is and how many mm -hmm. people are doing? Because I think that game hinges on social far more than most games. Definitely. Like, and, and to me, that's interesting, regardless if I'm in love with the that's idea. good point. Well, we'll see, man. We're going to get our hands on all these games within like a month, so it'll be a busy time for us. Um, Very much so. That'll wrap up episode 175 of the Ham Radio Podcast. We thank you so much for joining us. If you got this deep into the show, send us the hashtag... <sighs> Something about being busy. Busy B. I like Busy B. Busy B? Busy B. I was going to say create a character. <laughs> see, yeah. See. Yeah. Because <laughs> at least for right now, it doesn't yeah. sound like that's great. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag create a character. You got this deep. Let us know on Twitter. Handles are on screen right now at Jeremy Penter at G27 status. We yeah. hope to hear from you and we hope you enjoyed this episode. And we will catch you guys in next week's episode. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>